John chapter 11. Now a certain man, is what Luke kept saying, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany. That's the place you read, Jesus goes often, probably to Lazarus' house. Goes to Jerusalem, then goes to Bethany, comes back to Jerusalem. The town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Just a little side note by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Not interesting. The, the parentheses in your King James Bible, I gotta say King James Bible, that's the, the garbage we've been listening to this week, is a little footnote. An interesting footnote. Here's a story, right in the middle of the story, it's something very important. Imagine that important that Mary. Now Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That little footnote about Mary, what she did with the ointment for Jesus, is going to be forever eternally bound. More bound than your mortgage papers. More bound than your, your uh, car loan. More bound than any official document ever. And we have recorded about Mary. How much did the Holy Spirit and Jesus take what she did for him? It's recorded for all eternity. Several books. Several books. So you want attention by Jesus in the eternal? Do something for him. Do something with all your heart and all your love and all your care. Even if you ain't got nothing. Do it for him. Then we'll walk around heaven with a crown for all eternity, which you'll never lose. Don't lose your crowns now, because you can't gain them later. Therefore his sister sent unto him, Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Oh, Jesus loved others too. You gotta preach more love. Okay. Let's see what the love of God does. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. And you're going to say, well, I read this chapter. He dies. Does he? <laughs> now, some people make Jesus a liar. But the glory of God. What's the glory of God? He came out of that tomb. <clears throat> that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. You know how much the Son of God got glorified? <coughs> The religious group took counsel on how they might kill Lazarus. What did Lazarus do? He just got sick and died. That's all he did. He didn't ask anybody's opinion or a question. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He didn't get up and go right away. Trying to read today. It says Lazarus was dead four days. He had no pain or sorrow for four days. But he wasn't in heaven, he was in Abraham's bosom. So in reality, Jesus bring Lazarus back to life again. We've got to bring him back to pain and sorrow, and Lazarus is gonna die again. All for the glory of God. Did you hear what I said? I said, Lazarus laid in the grave without pain, without sorrow, without troubles. And Jesus brought him back so he can have pain and sorrow for the glory of God. Your pain and sorrows and troubles may be for the glory of God. That's the love. If God loves you, he says he loves Lazarus. I'd rather stay in the grave, maybe, you know. At least be Abraham's bosom in Lazarus time. With me, I'm absent from the body and present with the Lord. Don't you think Paul was upset after he was stoned? you imagine that moment that Paul was stoned, dying in agony, and they thought he was to be dead, went to glory, visited God before the throne, and God said, get back down there, and came up? What do you think? You think the pain of being stoned to death was just wiped away, eliminated? I don't think so. And would you deny that God loved Paul? How would you, how would you I mean, let's bring it up today. How would you like to be sitting in an electric chair for Jesus Christ? They pull the switch. You get to go to heaven. Boom. Oh, yeah, great. You're going back down. Your whole body's been fried. Get reality here. So Jesus stayed two days. Another point is to get just because you pray to God, don't think God's going to step up and do something for you right away. 
or something that God does want in our lives is called patience. And I'm not going to speak any more about that because I don't have it. Then after that, after the two days, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea. Again, that's, that's Judah. His disciples said, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. Chapter 10, verse 31. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Verse 39. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. The disciples were like, uh, Jesus, you forgot something. They want to kill you. Stone thee and goest thou thither again. You're going to go back there again? Oh, brother. Come on, these disciples are humans, aren't they? This guy has, has a death wish. But Jesus knows when his death is going to happen. So he's not panicking. He's not afraid. Let's go. They ain't going to touch me. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in a day? Jewish time. Forget your American time. Jewish day is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. according to the Bible. We're a Christian nation. Are we? How come we don't have Jewish time? Why do we got a calendar named after Roman gods? You know why we can't date the rapture and date the advent and all that? Because we ain't got the right calendar. I mean, what do you do? What do you do in America when it's four, when it's four o'clock? Good afternoon or good evening? Aren't there twelve hours in a day? If a man walk in a day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Basic. But if he walk in the night, he stumbles and hits his toe on the, on the coffee, you know, on the coffee table. You don't see it night because there is no light in him. Oh, wait a minute. That's not physical, is it? You mean I, I interpreted that wrong? It's spiritual. In him. It's not having a light, a flashlight or a light. In a, it's in him. If you walk in the light, you're going to have the daylight to guide you, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light. If you don't have it, your soul is going to stumble. Ooh, I almost did something wrong there. I almost did a Roman Catholic teaching, took it physical where it should have been spiritual. These things said he, <clears throat> and after that he saith unto him, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go. That I may wake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. That's not what he's talking about. And everybody knows. I mean, if you're sick, you're not feeling well, shh, let him sleep. Hospitals don't have this idea yet. They give you a pill to get you a rest, and three hours later, they come in to get your blood, your blood pressure, and make all kinds of racket to keep you awake. You should, we got a hospital here it's based you know a religion and you should put that in above every bed if he's sleeping he doeth well get out of here how be it Jesus spake of his death all right two things here this is where they get soul sleep but this is where really I'm a Christian I am washed in the blood of Jesus. if if the if the rapture of Terry and I die I'm going to sleep my body is going to lay down. You know how you know that? If my body is sound enough to put in a coffin, what's the thing you put under my head? A pillow. Why? Because it's sleeping. So you see? But the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. My body is there. You're looking at it. You're weeping over it. You're putting stuff in it. Stop, ki stop kissing dead bodies. It's gross. But my soul and my spirit are amongst God. Now, if you're lost, the Bible said, and the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. There's his body. But he's in hell in agony. And don't put over his grave resting in peace. He's The body may be. Now imagine Jehovah Witness putting on their grave rest in peace when they think the grave is hell. Where Jesus said, the grave is sleep. 
for me who is saved, my wife and my daughter and my son who are saved, they die. That body is sleeping, but their soul is with God joyfully. But for a man who is not saved, his body is in that, that coffin like a saved man, but his soul is in agony. And you don't know. You realize you will not know the true state of a man, whether he's saved or not, when you do you face the rapture or the great white throne judgment. And even then, I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I'm not gonna, say, I don't know if we're gonna know each. I'm gonna say, I don't know if we're gonna know each other who we are in heaven. I don't know. But yes, when your body has died, it sleeps, but your soul, but your soul. So he says, sleep. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. Look at that. The Bible explains to you. But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. First Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. They thought he was just, you know, sleeping off the fever. Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them plainly. Plainly. How many times has Jesus said stuff to these disciples? They had no idea. They didn't get it. They didn't get the death, burial, and resurrection that Jesus spoke of them to even after he rose from the grave and he rebuked them, right? But this one point that they did not understand, Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now why of all the, why didn't Jesus just turn around and say, hey, stop worrying about yourself. Let me explain something to you. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die for you guys and all these people around me. He never made it that plain for them. And yet, to tell them, oh, Lazarus is sleeping, well, it's good for him, why should we go? Hold it. Stop. What? Lazarus is dead. Now, why did he make that plan? And not his, his own death, burial, and resurrection. You ever wonder that? Why did he not stop those 12 and say, I'm going to die? But don't you worry. Three days and three nights, you meet me at that tomb, and I'm going to show you something wonderful. But the women came, seen to fix a dead body. Not because of the resurrection. They brought the spices and the cloths. But here he stops the disciples and said, plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. All right, stop. Guys, there's an important illustration coming up right now. You need to get this. You need to get your hearts out of your own pants and out of your own head, out of your own who you are, and pay attention. Now, let me tell you, Lazarus is dead. What I'm going to do is going to help you believe in me. <clears throat> Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples. All right, he turns to the other disciples. Let us go that we may die with him. <laughs> now, I'll give Thomas credit, okay? But he didn't get it. All right, wait, stop. Hold on. Lazarus is dead. All right, boys, let's go die with him. Thomas is thinking, okay, let's have 14 graves. Give Thomas credit. And, you know, well, Thomas doubted and all that. Well, but I'll tell you one thing. He wanted to die with Jesus. Of all people to die with, he wanted, he wanted his name and his body right there lying with Jesus. Even if it meant the Jews took up stones. You know how bad it would be to be rocked to sleep? You know how painful that would be? So Thomas says, let's go. Let's go die. Let's go die by stone. Let's go. Let's also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. He's dead and buried. 
There's no shadow of a doubt. Lazarus is dead. If he was not dead, they smothered him to death with all those grave clothes. Okay? Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem. That's a very important note there. Because when we get to the end of Jesus, he's Bethany, Jerusalem. He's back in Bethany. He goes back into Jerusalem. Bethany would mean house of something. It was about 15 furlongs off and I got about an eighth of a mile. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Their brothers died, they come. They have no idea what's happening. They have no idea Jesus is coming. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Remember Mary was the one listening to Jesus? Jesus is coming. She had peace. Now let me tell you, I, I know personally of a very fond loved one that has passed on to glory. I know what that peace is that Mary has. I don't know how Martha felt. Thank God I don't know. When you just got that peace, you know, I mean, you're upset. It's tears. You miss. But still, I had people come up to me during that time. I can't believe it. You're so calm and so still. I'm like, what? And inside, man, you know, really felt like a wreck. But there was still that peace. Because Mary heard the word. Martha was too busy in the kitchen. Come on, Jesus, make make Mary help me. Yeah, she's helping. She's listening. And Martha, as soon as the as uh, as soon as she heard Jesus coming, went to meet him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, "Lord, if thou hast been here, ooh, my brother had not died." Okay, she believes the power of healing of Jesus. She's a Pentecostal. Come on. Are we right? Jesus can heal. He has the power. Did he not heal people? Martha believed that. Okay. But man, she walks up like, you know, if you would have been here, a contentious woman is, 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 you know, drops of water, better to be in a corner top of the house than being with Martha. But I know. That even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. That's a strong belief. But she's angry. She's not at peace. I don't blame her. But had she sat with Jesus instead of cooking, because we're going to get a little debate here, and she loses. Mary is going to come to Jesus. She's going to fall apart before Jesus, and she still wins. I've been through this. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Is that not the truth? Yes. All Jews knew that. Everybody knows that today. They all believe that there's going to be one general resurrection and a few times of being in some kind of burning and then you all get to go to heaven. And we all, many people believe that heresy. But there's going to be a resurrection. Spoken about in Daniel. Through everlasting life and to everlasting damnation. You just don't want to believe the damnation part. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. Now, like you just picture. Here's a woman. She's just sobbing in tears. She's missing her brother. And she's arguing with God. Why well, know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day? Daniel 12, 2. Hold on, Martha. Put the pots and pans away and listen to Jesus, will you? She's much cumbered still, isn't she? I know he's going to rise again. But darn, if you would have been here, he wouldn't be dead. Shh. Listen to Jesus. Because something's going to happen, Martha, that's it's not going to happen again. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Ooh, Jesus. There's another I am. I am Jehovah. Jehovah the revelation. Uh, re resurrection, excuse me. And the life. Jesus said unto the woman, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. Oh, that, that's interesting. 
though he were dead? What is the state of Lazarus when he died? He believed on Jesus Christ. And it went with him to the grave. So, if you're a born again Bible believing Christian and you die, you don't, you know, you don't physically make the rapture. You die before the Lord comes for His church. You take your belief and you take it with you to the grave. So much that God takes your soul up, absent from the body, present with the Lord. When you die, that's not the end of your faith. When you die, that's the only beginning of your faith. How's that? In fact, as a Christian, really, you should be waiting for your death because that is, that's only the beginning. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Oh, wait a minute. Lazarus believed on the Lord. Didn't he die? No, he didn't. What did Jesus say? He sleeps. Look at that. Scripture within Scripture within the same chapter. He didn't die. He's a sleeper. And then physically... And spiritually, in Abraham's bosom, he is asleep. How's that one? Listen, for us Christians, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Man, we go right to the Lord Jesus Christ when we sleep, when we die, whatever you want to call it. And those are the four creatures shouting, holy, holy. And the, 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 the elders are casting their crowns. We won't have crowns yet. That hasn't come yet. Some people do believe we get judged at, uh, either or. I don't know. But what do you think? You think absent from the body, you, you're not going to be getting up with the, with the band singing true song, true songs for Christ, true songs for Jesus. You think he's just going to say, "Well, it's not my time to start singing yet. Not my time." No, man, you're going to be joyfully. Lazarus, where he goes right now, he goes to sleep. And the party doesn't start till Jesus comes walking across that gulf. And that dying thief starts, hey boys, here he comes. I saw him, here he comes. Oh, let me sleep. Oh no, Jesus is coming. The Messiah is coming. And Abraham was awake. You imagine Abraham and, the, and that dying thief. Okay, guys, get him up. Here he comes. Front and center. All right, everyone get their hello tag. Some of you may not know what I'm talking about. Hello, my name is... It's funny, even after that, many did not believe. Um, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? She says, um, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. She didn't believe in eternal life. Jesus asked her, believeth that they shall never die. I believe you're the Christ. I believe you're the Son of God. Martha was missing something. Martha did not have the hope. Now she could say she made a dinner for Jesus. When she had uh, when she had so said she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master cometh and calls for thee. Well, that's a lie. She avoided the question of eternal life, ran away, went and got Jesus is calling for you. There are many monsters out there. You say, Do you believe in eternal life? Leave me alone. I got life to live. Go talk to them. Take your business in a church somewhere. When she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secret, secretly. Secretly. I don't know about Martha. I got to doubt her. The master has come, calls for me. And as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. After she's heard the word that Jesus called her out, even though it wasn't true. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Well, he's taking his time. She left a house full of people, many family, many friends, many unsaved. She left that house to go see Jesus. 
Mary, I know for sure, is saved. The Jews then that which were with her in the house comforted her. When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. No one's no one got upset when Martha left. And then when Mary was come where Jesus was, she saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Now, you think that would have been the same attitude if Martha would have said it? I don't think so. She's Yeah, she's crying and she's looking to hope like you're the one. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Hebrews 4, 13, 15, and chapter 2, verses 14, 15. Jesus was man. He had to learn obedience. He had to learn feelings. This is the first time that God got choked over a human. Of all the Old Testament, this is the first time he looked down the man and, and Jesus was a loss for words. Imagine that. And said, where have you laid him? Now he knew that. They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Luke 19, 41. This is the first time in recorded history that God has ever cried. Remember what Job says? Have you got eyes like a man? Have you ever cried, God? And God would answer, no, I haven't, but wait. Can you imagine that moment? There he is with the Jews, with Mary, at a funeral or a post-funeral. And God in the flesh, I said God in the flesh, is now crying. You better believe Jesus knows how you feel. You got pain? Take your back being bruised and ripped open like a farmer does with a field. Got heartache and troubles? This is a family that he loved is recorded in the Bible. One, it looks like she may not go into eternity very well. And he wept. Now watch this. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? They're wondering what God can do. And even in a post funeral tears upset, they're looking at that man. They, they don't believe who he is. Man, look at the miracles. See the miracles now? You see what they're doing for Jesus? If he could open the eyes of blind, he could have saved this man. The disciples are there. They're going to learn an important lesson. Martha is going to learn a left lesson. Mary's only going to get strengthened in the faith. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. This, again, is the first time God has ever stepped into a grave, a cemetery. The other one, they were bringing the child to the, on the bier, the coffin. To the gravesite. He wasn't at the gravesite. They're going through the, the town. And the other one was in her house. The other one was in her house. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, David, John the Baptist, even Paul, Peter, James, John. God has never physically visited their graves. Even at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This moment, here is God crying. Here is God at a grave. Where all the world thinks it's hopeless. And he can write 
First Thessalonians chapter 4. And he tells you, Paul said, hey, weep, but don't weep like those that don't have hope. Run you back to John 11. Uh, Martha's weeping. She had, yeah, we're going to be all raised up generally. Watch. Watch Martha. She's something else. It was a cave. Sound familiar? Peter? Get this. It was a cave. In the cave is a dead body, Peter. Get this. John stood outside. Peter ran in, didn't he? And a stone laid upon it. Does that not sound familiar to the disciples? And to Mary herself. This is the scene where Jesus is going to be. And yet, like Lazarus, Jesus is coming out on his own power for hope and for glory. You know why Jesus said, stop, he's dead? Come on, pay attention. Because what's going to happen to Lazarus is going to happen to Jesus. Lazarus becomes a type of Christ. And something weird happens with Lazarus. You can't explain. So. Jesus, take away the stone. Martha said unto him that was dead. The sister of him that had been dead. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he had been, there, he had been dead four days. How long was Jesus in the grave? So Corinthians, Paul writes to him, says there was no corruption. Lazarus has now begun to corrupt, stink, gross, gooing, bugs, insects. You know why it was three days and three nights? Because Jesus did not corrupt. He did not decompose yet. Lazarus, he's all right, he stinks. When you open up that, that stone, oh, don't do it, Jesus. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto her that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God? Man, he's rebuking her at the funeral. How dare you? Listen, I got rebuked at, at the funeral of my wife. How dare you? Hey, it's the truth. It's the truth. Go, go leave. I don't care. It's the truth. Then they took away this. They were more obedient to Jesus than Martha. If I was Martha, I would, okay. <clears throat> uh, you need a little help, Martha, but let's do it. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Now for Jesus, it was the angel of the Bible or an earthquake, either or, but both. But don't you see Jesus? And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, he's not doing a show here. But he's speaking to the Father openly for, a, for the people to know. This is the Father. It's an example. Didn't we already read in the previous chapter? That the resurrection, Jesus said, I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it up. We read pre previously, he said, the Father shall raise me up. He is speaking now, the Father shall raise me up. With chapter 10, we see that Jesus is God by the resurrection. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I'm going to believe, listen, uh, I think he said lashes because I think if he just said come forth, I bet you everybody would have came out. Yeah. Okay? And he said with a loud voice, Lazarus is down deep in the heart of the earth. Lazarus, come forth. And it's Genesis 1, and God said, there's Genesis 1, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, was dead, Holy Spirit said was dead, came forth, bound head and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Question number two, miracle number two, not only do we have the resurrection, the disciples are saved. We forgot the fact is, how on earth did he come out of there? 
You can't go. Mm, mm, mm. You can't. Impossible. And yet, this lesson was for Mary. It was for Martha. It was for the disciples. It was for the Jews. That man was dead. Now, he's, mm. so what's the imitation of the world today? Lazarus is a semi-walking zombie. zombie, but he's alive. He's not a zombie. He's a, he's not looking for brain. Now, I may say this too, if I can. Isn't it great that the Jews did not practice the Egyptian embalming? Mm. Can you imagine Lazarus coming out of that grave not having no more brains or stomach that they took out of the nose? That's what the Egyptians did. They embalmed, Joseph had the Egyptians embalm his father. Well, thank God Jacob didn't come out of the grave. Man, I'm hungry because Lazarus is going to eat. Man, I'm hungry, but I can't eat because I ain't got no more stomach. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph was even embalmed and put in a coffin. It's like God already knew. I'm being punful here. God already knew. Listen, man, of all the world, don't you dare embalm those bodies because you're going to mess up Jesus' miracle. So here he is. He's bound, the Holy Spirit says. He couldn't re use his hands to unbound it because they're bound. He couldn't really walk because his foot was bound in grave clothes. He couldn't see. He, he imagine him coming out of that, that grave bumping and things. No, I don't think so. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. And many, not all, not all, not all your family is going to get saved. Not all your co-workers. Not everybody you preach to is going to get saved. Many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. That's why he did works. Remember the works were testified? This thing that happened, many, not all, said, that's God. There is no doubt about it. That is God. And there are some that said, Oh well. He done it by the devil. That's what they said before. He was casting out devils. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them which things he had. There's the media. There's the news cat. Live on the spot. Action News 10. We're here at the grave of Lazarus not to find a body here. Thieves came by night. Ready? Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Matthew six Mark sixteen says to confirm the word. Out of their own lips, this guy is doing miracles. There is no shadow of a doubt. What did Pilate said for envy? Jesus is getting the people. And the, and the thing is recorded, he's not getting all of them. There's still Satan's crowd that would love to follow these guys. And away from Jesus. They're angry because Jesus is doing things. If we let him, if we let thus alone, all men will believe on him. Yeah, amen. Well, I don't think you need to worry about that. All men, that would include them, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the Romans shall come and take away both our, play, our place, our place, our place, our place, our place, and, oh, the nation, the people. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If this man has the power to raise a guy from the dead, you just heard live on the spot from Johnny Recorder. If he has the ability to, to take away leprosy, tell a man that you've seen with a with a withered hand, put your hand out, and it's there moving about. I think this guy would have more power than Roman government. You're just throwing accusations out there. You fear the people. You fear that this man's going to take your place. And you're thinking irrationally. Because if you were to believe that this man is truly of God, that this man is the Messiah like you're supposed to believe, if you know the scriptures, you know there'll be a judgment of all the nations, and Israel will be in their land with the Messiah, with the prince, and the temple would be there, and everything hunky-dory, last chapter's Ezekiel. But you don't believe that. 
So you end up Jesus at the right hand of the Father and Rome destroying you in 70 AD. And now you're scattered throughout the whole world. You really have, you went back, but you have not really been back. Your heart is, you're there physically in Israel, but your heart's not there. And one of them, named Caiaphas, Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto him, Ye know nothing at all. Ooh, okay, boy. But he's speaking about the Holy Spirit, not of belief. Men wrote the Bible. Here's a man that doesn't believe in God, speaking for God. Remember that, that Babylonian officer that came to Jeremiah? I mean, he didn't believe in God and came to Jeremiah. You know why this has happened? And he quotes the whole book of Jeremiah. You guys sinned. He confirmed Jeremiah's writings in a paragraph what Jeremiah wrote 52 books of. So God can use heathen to speak his word. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Now this is where John F. Kennedy got asked not for your, his speech. That's where that Roman Catholic ran to an unsaved priest about denying the works of Jesus Christ from the graveyard. Did you get that? The news is Jesus has risen a, gra a dead body out of the graveyard. This is why the council is coming together. But this guy, and not for the nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God. I'm a child of God. Adopted by the gospel of Jesus Christ, he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again victorious that I may have victory over death and hell. The children of God that they that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. This man is spoken by the Holy Spirit to the council that does not believe in Jesus about what Jesus is going to do. This council has heard the gospel, even though the gospel hasn't happened yet. That's interesting. 51. And thus he spake not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. So they cannot say that their priest did not preach the Messiah. You know, he didn't believe. So, 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 so. There will be people who preach from pulpits who do believe in Jesus, but they have the message that God sent forth. It's possible. Isn't that interesting? And this is all over a picture of what's going to happen to Jesus very soon. There's 54, 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together that for to put him to death. That's not the first counsel they had to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. Here we go. The stage has been set. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Their unclean lives. Jesus just left Jerusalem. He'll be back. What the Porky used to say, blah, 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 that ain't all, folks. So in the meantime, the tables are getting set up, aren't they? The animals are being caged. 
You know, some people don't know what I'm talking about. Just reading a note here. Some of these notes, I wonder. Then sought they for Jesus and spanked among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye? That he will not come to the feast? The law said you had to come. Is he going to be a lawbreaker this time? Did we scare him out of the law? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment. Oh, 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 look at that. Look at that. If God's commandments weren't enough, the chief priests and the Pharisees added more commandments. That if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. There's a decree. I don't know. Well, let's see. What would that be? A wanted poster hanging up over the place? But I don't know. Maybe they did have a picture of Jesus on a wanted poster. At least the word got out. If you know where Jesus is. Now, let me say something else. Aren't they looking for Jesus? They sought for Jesus? Aren't they looking for him? They ain't looking for salvation. They're looking to kill him. There are some people that seek Jesus so they can get their bubble gum. They can put their prayer quarter in the machine, turn it, and get their bubble gum. And then they get upset because it wasn't the colored bubble gum they wanted. <coughs> there are many ways to salt Jesus. And when you do any kind of ministry, be prepared. Some people will seek you for Jesus so they can get a hamburger. Some people seek Jesus through you so they can get money to buy beer or a prostitute or drugs. Some people will seek Jesus in a, in a war battlefield just to get out of the war battlefield. Some people will seek Jesus for a prophet, and I'm not talking about a man that speaks the word of God. You gotta be... I've been saved since 68, and I, I've been witnessing since, since the second day I, I was saved. I have seen. 87. I've been witnessing since the second day I was saved. I have seen all kinds of uh, seeking Jesus. And I, all the people, I've they've sought Jesus one way or another. And I'm thinking right now. The ones that actually truly got saved by my lips helping them. I'm going to say I can count them on one hand. Maybe two. Maybe two. And you got you got to be careful because uh, listen, I, I'm I'm a stickler when it comes to saying this prayer. Oh, they came to Jesus. Well, I've had them say a prayer. We're warned by the Holy Spirit that these people were seeking Jesus and they weren't seeking Jesus for the right thing. You know? Today, cancer is so wise, but you might come to Jesus just so the cancer will disappear. Now, God can use it for salvation, but Jesus is going to come into Jerusalem. They're going to triumph over him. Glory to God. Hosanna. Here he is. But how many of those people, when they yell out crucify him, were the ones that he healed and relieved the devil? I mean, I don't know. Maybe none. Maybe, maybe I could be wrong. But here is a case that we're closing in this chapter. A miracle of all miracles has happened. And the end of this chapter, they are seeking Jesus. Amen. No, they're seeking to kill him. Now, I am not that cruel for a faith healer. I'm not going to go take a faith healer by hand. There's a cemetery behind us. Hey, come on, raise those. I'm not, I'm not going to be so cruel. I'll take that faith healer by hand. I'll go to the hospital behind me and say, let's go to room to room. 
you got the signs of God, you got the wonders and miracles of God, let's go to the hospital. I won't, never mind the cemetery. Because they're either in glory or in hell. And I preach, you can't redo your life, so let's leave them in hell. But let's go to that hospital. But if you were to go to a graveyard, and those graves would arise, there's only one thing you could say, that is God. And you come seeking God to kill him for what he done, that is not salvation. That will never be salvation. And your guilty plea will be pronounced by a judge. Your envy caused it. That's what we're left in John 11.